news. Do you think it's appropriate for the White House to say what is and what is not a news organization? Should your advisors raise this issue? Well, no. The, I think that what our advisors have simply said is, is that um, we are going to take uh, media as it comes. And if media is operating basically as a talk radio format, then that's one thing. And if it's operating as a uh, as a news outlet, then that's another. Uh, but it's not something I'm losing a lot of sleep over. Okay, that was the president on Fox News and the back and forth. Then today, there was an announcement by the administration. They were putting out the PAYSAR, Kenneth Feinberg, as we showed you earlier, uh, for the White House pool. They sent out a message to the White House pool that Feinberg would be doing a round robin of interviews with the five network pool that covers uh, the White House, basically shares the costs and the daily coverage uh, duties of covering the president. Fox News has been a member since 1997. Uh, when they put out that message, they specified that all members of the pool were welcome except Fox News. Well, the other members of the TV pool said, well, we're not going to do the interview unless Fox News is included. That's how our day went. We're back with the panel. What about the latest in this back and forth, Fred? You know, fiddling, trying to fiddle with the pools at the White House, which is an official thing, you know, a, a, a group of reporters go in when the whole uh, uh, kit and caboodle of the White House press corps can't go. Uh, it's an official thing. And the fool with that to try to ban Fox is just breathtaking in its pettiness. Uh, and, and I think that the Obama White House has gone this far. Uh, you know, it's time to let go. This doesn't help them. Look. We've seen this. Conservative presidents have done this, attack the media. Remember in 1992, those bumper stickers, uh, vote for Bush, annoy the media. Uh, well, maybe it did. <laughs> I don't think it annoyed, it annoyed the media much when he got 37 or 38 percent of the vote. Uh, presidents do not benefit from this. Uh, Obama's not going to benefit from it uh, at all. Uh, and, and he just ought to stop. I thought this interview would be the time for him to stop, to back off. but. He's not backing off at all. I, I, I mean, this is crazy. And one, one adjective comes up. And when this adjective comes up, you know you're in trouble. Charles is nodding. It's Nixonian. <laughs> That's the one. And that's not a compliment. When the five network rotation stood up, after that announcement was made, the administration relented. Then the Feinberg interviews were taken from five minutes to two minutes. Now, there may be extenuating circumstances for the timing, but every network only had two minutes yeah, with the pays are. I don't have as much of a problem with. Ken Feinberg did a masterful job in those two minutes. He got across. So why not put him out did. there for five? Well, look, the White House. Or ten. The White House got its job, accomplished its goal with Ken Feinberg in two minutes. He made an absolutely blind, blindingly articulate case for the White House. One reporter called it like speed dating. Okay, because maybe it you was. Were in but and you know, out. You that know was what? It. It's like then, the, the, I think that on that grounds, the press has very little to complain about. Go and interview other people about the pay issue. They gave him, they gave us Ken Feinberg right. for two minutes. However, Turn, Mara, it, to yes, the, question the question of the president okay. saying Fox yeah. News is like talk radio. The White House view is that a lot of Fox News is like talk radio. And I think in the short run, this war is probably benefiting both sides. It certainly hasn't hurt Fox ratings at all. We wouldn't be discussing it otherwise. And the White House, I think, is sending in a message to its base that says, we're going to fight back against our biggest enemy in the media. In the long term, I don't really understand where this goes. Because now, the pool question was a good example. The White House, every White House plays, plays favorites and has people they want to give interviews to and people who they don't. If they dealt with every network individually, they wouldn't have had this problem. To deal with the pool as an official entity, I thought I didn't understand that at all. Because the pool acted as it has to act in its official capacity to represent everybody. I just don't see where this goes in the future and how it benefits anybody. Charles. Lamar Alexander is a senator. He's an old hand in Washington. He was a, a secretary of education in the first Bush administration, and he's not a wing nut. And he gave a speech this week in which he expressed a dismay and alarm over the way the Obama administration is demonizing, not just cr criticizing, but demonizing and trying to ostracize and destroy its opponents. And he went through a list of these, including the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the insurance companies, the Fox News. I would add the way it tried to demonize the people who attended the uh, town halls in August and, and those who have demonstrated uh, in the uh, teabag demonstrations. And Alexander said, I was in the Nixon White House at the age of 27, and I saw how the poison of enemies lists worked and what happened in the end. And when Alexander is saying that, I think the people ought to listen. I think this is really destructive. 
the um, what happened today I think was extremely important because in trying to ostracize and, de and, de and demonize Fox the administration needs complicity from other news organizations otherwise it won't work and what happened today was other news organizations admirably and on, on principle standing up and saying no if you are not going to include the Fox we're not going to go and that the solidarity I think is important we are all in the business uh, together we have different perspectives nobody is, is uh, enjoys a kind of holy objectivity uh, and what happened, I thought, was a confrontation between an overreaching executive and a free press, and the executive backed down. It, it was a, a big moment for, for the White House press pool, but Mara, where are the First Amendment folks uh, that a lot of times the, you look at it, what if this happened under George W. Bush, and, and he did didn't not... Somebody, didn't someone get kicked off Cheney's plane? I, Remember I, that? I, don't I think a news organization did get, but get kicked off Cheney's plane. Everyone stood up. Yeah, but it, if wasn't, any, it, yeah. it, it wasn't a concerted it, campaign it, it yeah. that there is matter, against yeah. Fox and, News. And it wasn't in midair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my point being... In mid -air. Look, I think that access is not the same thing as free speech. I mean, access means you, you don't, you're not, the White House is not duty bound by the First Amendment to give everybody the same interview. No, nobody said but that. But as long but as they're look, using the pool no. system, which they probably now think it was a mistake, the pool acts as it's supposed to, which is a guardian for everybody's interest collectively. Well, just wait. And the next step, if the next step is to bar White House, uh, Fox News from sending White House reporters, I mean, they could yank their press pass and bar them if they want to. No, I don't think they'd go that far, but uh, it fits in with what they're doing so far. That's it for the panel. But stay tuned for an interview that didn't start.